me bandito, gangsterito, me costeto, pistoleto, oh yeah. me strilanto, un divanto, un gradanto, toieto, oh yeah. The UK litigation of Boris Berezovsky and Roman Abramovich has been dubbed the biggest private court battle in human history. Boris Berezovsky, a Russian oligarch, claimed that Roman Abramovich, another Russian oligarch, cheated him out of more than $5 billion. Roman Abramovich vehemently contested the allegations. The fortune of the 41-year-old Abramovich, according to the Forbes magazine, has been assessed at 12.1 billion British pounds, while the wealth of the 62-year-old Berezovsky was estimated at a relatively modest 1.3 billion US dollars. Both parties, Berezovsky and Abramovich, are Russian citizens and generally enjoy recognition as successful businessmen. Mr. Berezovsky fled from Russia to England in 2000 after his open and direct confrontation with President Vladimir Putin who was elected in March of that year. Mr. Abramovich, though officially residing in Russia, frequently visits England where he owns the Chelsea football team. Berezovsky brought two claims against Abramovich in the High Court of Justice, Queen's Bench Division of the Commercial Court in London for the total amount of $5.6 billion. The first claim was based on an interest that Berezovsky alleged he had in Sibirska Neftinaya Kampania, Sibneft. The second claim was connected to an interest that Berezovsky alleged he had in the Ruske Alumini, Rusal, which became a substantial company in the Russian aluminum industry. The dispute between Berezovsky and Abramovich arose from the time when both men made their fortunes in the murky Russia of the 1990s. The claim central to Berezovsky's case was that he was a partner with Abramovich in the Russian oil giant Sivneft. According to Berezovsky, Abramovich later forced him to sell his interest in the company at a grossly undervalued price, exploiting Berezovsky's conflict with Vladimir Putin in 2000. Berezovsky and one of his close business partners, known as Badri Patserkatsashvili and Abramovich, orally agreed in 1995 to acquire a controlling interest in an oil company, which was to acquire the businesses of various Russian oil companies. In the event, the oil company which acquired such businesses was Sibneft. The principal terms of the oral agreement was that any ownership interest which they acquire in Sibneft would be held for their benefit as follows, 50% for the benefit of Abramovich on the one hand and 50% for the benefit of Berezovsky and Patarkatsushvili on the other hand. Profits would be distributed in the same percentage proportion. The judge politely described the official version of Berezovsky's claim against Abramovich. Two business partners cannot agree on dividing up the profits of a company that they both at one time owned. The state company, Sibneft, was created in 1995 by an executive order of President Yeltsin as part of the program of privatization. It effectively emerged from the union of two companies in the oil sector. The state company Sibneft was created for the sole purpose of its immediate privatization, as Abramovich's lawyer, Lord Jonathan Sumption, said in his remarks on the second day of his address to the court. In 1995, Berezovsky talked to the Russian president, Boris Yeltsin, into creating Sibneft and privatizing it, so that the profits the company generated would finance the operation of the ORT Channel 1 television network that Berezovsky owned. With this financing mechanism in place, the major media network was to support Yeltsin's re-election campaign in 1996. Of even greater interest was the testimony of Raman Abramovich relative to the privatization episode. 
the Russian tycoon admitted under oath that the Sibneft collateral auction was a fiction. He talked about the ways in which preferential conditions were created so that the company Berezovsky and Abramovich controlled would win in the bidding. More specifically, Abramovich described the manner in which all other participants in the auction were eliminated. Abramovich affirmed that Berezovsky and his partner, Badri Patarkatsvili, talked with one of the other participants of the auction and that one of the participants then sharply reduced its bid while the second participant withdrew its offer altogether. These behind-the-scenes maneuvers allowed Berezovsky and Abramovich to buy Sibneft at the price near where the bidding started, $100.3 million, only slightly up from the starting price of $100 million. The result of this elaborate half-criminal and corrupt acquisition scheme unfolding in 1995 was that three men, Berezovsky, Abramovich, and Patarkatsvili, came to acquire the largest Russian private company at an incredible bargain price. Some 10 years later, in 2005, a significant share of Sibneft, 72%, was sold to another state company, at the price of $13.1 billion, as the remaining part of Sibneft was later sold for another $4 billion, it is clear that the real market value of the company at the time of its sale must have been around $17 billion. In describing the Russian businesses climate of the mid-90s, the lawyer for Abramovich asked the judge to go back to the time of Shakespeare and imagine that the post-Soviet Russia was a place where the law disappeared, where the government collapsed, where police corruption was rampant, and where the courts were unpredictable at best. Nobody could do business without access to the government, Lord Sumption said. If you did not have political power yourself, you had to have access to a godfather who had it. Berezovsky had tremendous influence in the 1990s as a result of his friendship with a member of the Boris Yeltsin's family. He understood that being close to political power can in and of itself be a source of getting rich, Lord Sumption remarked. According to Lord Sumption, from 1995 to 2002, companies that were under the control of Abramovich paid Berezovsky $2 billion for his political patronage, which Berezovsky used to buy palaces in France, expensive paintings, and diamond for his girlfriend. Of critical significance to the determination of the legitimacy of the transaction between Berezovsky and Abramovich was the form the transaction took. As it became apparent during court hearings, the parties did not have any formal contract. In the course of the legal action, almost no official documents were presented to the court as the deals that were talked about were sealed with handshakes not with signatures on contracts or rubber stamps. There were no documents to the effect that Berezovsky owned any shares in Sibnevch, just as there were no documents to show that Abramovich owned any shares in the oil company. The company with market value reaching into billions of dollars was directed by two shareholders who had only an oral agreement between themselves. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Russia, Russia will collapse. Or Putin will collapse. Putin took power and started to move country back. He really does not believe democracy in general because he does not understand. And today parliament is under 100% control of, of the Kremlin and the court also under 100% control, under control of the Kremlin. And now Putin is trying to destroy independence of regions I really think that the time of Putin regime is not too long. Okay. By early 2000, the same three partners, Berezovsky, Abramovich, and Patarkasvili, became significant players in Russia's aluminum sector. On an offer from Abramovich, the participants in the businesses decided to enter into a joint arrangement with Russian aluminum baron Oleg Diripaska 
to create a monopoly company, Rusal. According to the terms of the alleged business agreement reached in March 2000 at the Dorchester Hotel in London, one 50% stake in the new enterprise was to go to Diripaska and his partners, and the other 50% stake was to be transferred to Abramovich, Berezovsky, and Patarkatsashvili. The latter group agreed to split its shares into the following manner, 25% to Abramovich and 12.5% each to Berezovsky and Parkatsashvili. An important component of the alleged agreement was that none of the three could sell out his interest without the contest of all others. In the fall of 2003, Abramovich sold his shares without obtaining approval either from Berezovsky or Patrakatsashvili. When Abramovich sold his stake in the businesses to Diripaska, he received for his 25% some $1.75 billion. When Diripaska's acquisition on a controlling stake in the enterprise, the shares of Berezovsky and Patarkatsashvili markedly went down in value. When they sold their outstanding stakes to Diripaska in July of 2004, they received only $450 million. Receiving inadequate consideration for the sale of Rusal's shares prompted Berezovsky to accuse Abramovich of violating the trust agreement and to demand compensation of $60 million. In summary, the testimony of Abramovich was that Berezovsky could not have held any shares in Rusal. Berezovsky did not do anything that would guarantee him any stake in the company, Lord Jonathan Sumption said. Like the previous business transaction, this deal was also made orally and there were no documents evidencing the agreement or the transfer of shares.